Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And um, I just want to say a personal thank you to all of you who subscribed and uh, liked our videos. And for those of you who took the time to comment, it really means a lot to us. So I just want to say thank you for that. And uh, if you're new here and you haven't already subscribed, um, please consider doing so. It really helps us out and uh, it's going to help us help our little channel grow as well. So on to the show today. Um, today I want to talk to you about the autopilot or rather the FCU, Flight Control Unit. That's this guy right over here. So this is the famous autopilot panel. All right. And as you can see, I've got the autopilot one on, and uh, I'm currently at flight level 130, uh, well, 13,000 feet, and I'm in a hold right now at a way uh, just outside Dubai International Airport. So I'm planning to do an approach uh, into Dubai International Airport where I will be performing a ILS to runway 30 left. And uh, what I wanted to do today was I wanted to take you through the various modes and I wanted to give you an idea of how to to master this panel now generally when we're flying the A320 we always generally like 90% of the time or maybe more than 90% of the time we use the autopilot now the autopilot is an amazing tool helps us to um, helps us to fly the aircraft uh, more effectively more safely and but it's got a lot of modes so if you didn't know uh, how to use it it can be a little bit taxing so um, the first thing you want to do is you want to remember that the autopilot has got two modes one is managed and the second is selected all right managed and selected so if the aircraft is in managed mode that means managed would mean it would be taking all of its information from the MCDU and whatever you program into the box is what it's going to be uh, doing all right so for example uh, I'm gonna start from the left to the right okay so we'll start with the speed all right if it's managed you will see that there is these dashes over here these dashes and a little circle that means it's managed so as of right now the flight management guidance system uh, thinks oh, that we should be doing a speed of about 220 knots you see the magenta triangle there that's managed if you see magenta that means it's a managed speed that speed is being dictated by the box by the uh, flight management guidance system by the uh, MCDU all right so that's why it's dashed so whatever it goes into this whatever this guy thinks the aircraft the speed that the aircraft should be maintaining it's gonna display it here and it's gonna make sure that if it's managed you're going to um, uh, it, the aircraft will maintain that now obviously you can go selected now when it comes to selected all you have to do is remember manage is pushing it in if you push the knob any of these knobs if you push them in it's managed if you pull it out it's selected and the the, the good way to remember it is like if you push it in you're pushing it towards the aircraft saying okay fine you onboard computer you think about uh, what should be the best speed what should be the best climb what would be the the best um, um, track to follow if you pull it towards you pull it out towards you then you're saying okay I'm gonna tell you what I want all right so that's kind of how I like to remember managed and selected so right now we're in managed speed but what I can do is right now I'm going to I'm gonna pull the knob out and as soon as you pull it out it immediately defaults to the speed that you're maintaining right now 215 knots but because I've pulled it out, the little circle disappeared. And as you can see, that magenta triangle has now become blue. Which means now I can choose what speed I want. So currently it's 215. Let me dial in a speed of 230. 
and as you can see the engines throttle up to increase our speed and there's 230 selected and the aircraft is now going to 230 that's because I manually chose that I wanted the autopilot to fly at a speed of 230 okay so that's how you do that now if I reduce the speed back to 220 you can see the the knob disappears the uh, the triangle the triangle blue triangle moves and now the airspeed's coming down to 220 likewise if I go up to 240 there we go I've set 240 the aircraft increases power on the engines and it makes sure that it obtains and maintains a speed of 240 for me and it's gonna do that until I choose to change this so that's the beauty of the autopilot everyone thinks you put the autopilot on then you go to sleep that is not true um, the autopilot is a very very advanced cruise control system it will never supersede what the pilot programs in over here and in the MCDU so now if I want to leave selected and I want the aircraft to do the speeds for me automatically again I'm gonna put it back into managed so to put the aircraft back in manage mode all you have to do is push the knob in push it you get the dashes and the little dot and there we go now we've got a magenta triangle and the aircraft thinks 220 is the speed we should be in for this hold so now it's gonna do everything it needs to do to maintain 220 knots so that's how you do manage and select and speed all right at any given time provided the auto trust is on you can manage or select your speed likewise now the next thing would be the the uh, horizontal navigation or lateral lateral navigation all right right now because I programmed in a hold at the present position this is the hold I want to maintain and to do that the aircraft is in nav mode okay navigation means it's gonna take all the waypoints that are programmed into the into the into the box into the MCDU so if I for example if I wanted to go direct to this waypoint over here Navix I'll go direct to I'm gonna choose Navix it's going to create an intercept for me and then I'm going to insert it and now it's nav because I'm leaving the hold the aircraft thinks I should be doing 314 knots because I'm over 10,000 feet so it's accelerating to its new managed speed and we are now in nav following this track to go to Navix all right so that's basically how you as long as the aircraft is in nav the aircraft is the the autopilot is going to follow waypoints that are programmed in over here either waypoints or a hold or an ILS or whatever so now let's just say I don't want it to fly uh, to a specific waypoint um, air traffic control called me up and said hey uh, we need you to vector around some weather we need you to make some turns uh, off your track so now we would have to go from nav mode into a heading mode so now what I do is this knob over here you pull it which means now I'm gonna choose what I want the aircraft to do and it defaulted to the heading it was at at the moment which is 176 degrees and what it's gonna do now is as I dial let's just say I want to turn to the right to a heading of 210 degrees I simply dial this to the right 210 and the aircraft will there's 210 in there and 210 up there in blue because it's not managed it's selected selected means blue and now the aircraft is gonna go over to a heading of 210 degrees and once it gets there it's gonna level off so and as you can see it changed from nav to heading so that's the mode that the autopilot is in right now so as I dial headings it's gonna do it for me so let's just say I want to go to the right heading 270 I'm gonna put 270 in there and the aircraft will simply follow my instructions so that is selected on the navigation part now if I want it to resume and go back to Navex as long as I'm in an intercept part to it all I have to do is push this knob in 
it's now going to search the dot has come online it's now searching for Navix and it's gonna try and intercept Navix and then in a few minutes this numbers will disappear so that's how you go selected and managed on the heading all right so now let's just say I wanted to uh, turn I'm gonna go back to selected heading and I'm gonna go to a heading of 210 degrees all right now the reason I'm doing that is because I want to go to this waypoint here named Lorik and uh, while the aircraft is getting there let's talk about the altitude now as of right now I'm at, a, I'm at an altitude of 13,000 feet and it's shown here 130 Okay. We're not climbing, we're not descending on the vertical speed. Flight director is guiding the aircraft to maintain uh, 13,000 feet. Now, but what I want to do is, I want to climb. So there are, there are two ways to climb in an aircraft. You can either climb, you can either climb using open climb. So for example, if I go to flat, uh, flat level 150 so 13,000 transition so anything over 13,000 becomes uh, flight levels and I pull the aircraft goes to open climb mode open climb means it's going to ignore any constraints it's going to ignore uh, any limitations along the way and it's going to basically take us all the way without any restrictions to flight level 150 now that's open climb open climb basically is also a mode which will climb to maintain speed okay so if you watch what happens now if I want to climb a little faster let's put this to let's say flight level 210 okay right now it's managed to a speed of two about 290 knots okay so it's maintaining a climb rate of 3100 feet a minute because in open climb, it's trying to maintain that speed. Now I can change the rate of climb two ways, all right? So either I can, I can go vertical speed. So if I, this is the vertical speed now. So if I pull the vertical speed, it's, it's currently 2,900 feet per minute. And it changes now to a VS mode of plus 2,900. Now I can choose to climb at a higher rate which is going to be around 3,500 feet a minute and it goes to 3,500 and you can see the vertical speed is climbing. Three, up, you will see 3.5 there very soon. But the problem with vertical speed is now the aircraft is, is pitching up to maintain a climb rate of 3,500 which if you are not in the right performance parameters could cause you to lose speed. All right, so you have to be very careful when you're climbing uh, or descending with vertical speed. Now, another good thing about vertical speed is if I want to stop right here, all you have to do is push and it becomes zero. And now it also becomes VS zero and the aircraft will basically level off at where it is. As you can see now, the vertical speed is gonna come to zero and, where, and basically it's gonna stop climbing right there. That's how you work the vertical speed mode. Now, let's just say I wanted to climb maintaining a speed of 300 all right because right now selected is just above 280 about 290 knots so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull the speed make it 300 the indicator goes to blue to mark 300 the aircraft is accelerating to 300 and now that I'm on selected speed, all I have to do now is pull the altitude knob again and the aircraft is going to go back to open climb but because we've manually chosen 300, it's now going to pitch just enough and climb at a vertical speed that will maintain 300. You're not going to lose, out, you're not going to lose any speed because it will never exceed the angle of attack that would cause us to reduce our speed below 300. Now the same thing, if I wanna climb faster, all I have to do 
is to reduce the speed. Watch what happens. I'm going to reduce my speed now to a selected speed of 280. Because we've got excess speed, watch the, watch the vertical speed. It's going to start climbing now and it's going to pitch up until the aircraft reaches a speed of 280. Let me increase our climb to about 300. So now once you get to 280, watch what it does with the pitch. Now it's going to lower the pitch of the nose to maintain a speed of 280. So that way you can climb faster. Now if I go back to managed over there, now it's going to be about 290. It's going to lower the nose a little bit just to catch up to that speed and then it's going to vary it's going to vary the pitch of the airplane to maintain that speed so that's how you do that now if i want to descend down to a flight level of say i want to come back to 13000 feet i can either choose now i've dialed in 13000 i can choose now either to go for an open descent or I can choose to descend. So I want to descend at just 1,000 feet a minute. So I dial this to the left and I make it negative 1,000, all right? So now the aircraft is gonna pitch down. Here's negative 1,000 on our FMA. And you can see the vertical speed should not exceed 1,000 feet per minute coming down. So that's how you can control yourself in the air. Now if I pull the knob, it's going to go out of vertical speed and it's going to go into open descent which means it's going to descend based off speed manage speed or selected speed either way it's going to descend now maintaining 280 knots now just like I did for the climb if I select my speed and I increase my speed the aircraft is going to pitch down even further and it's going to increase our uh, rate of descent because now it wants to descend and let gravity accelerate us until we reach a speed of 290. If I manage it, if I slow it down to say, uh, let me go with like 250 knots, all right, 250, that's way down there. So you can see the aircraft is reducing the rate of descent, it's reducing its angle of attack, it's actually bringing the nose up in order to cause the airspeed to bleed off until we reach 250 and then it's going to basically do whatever it needs to do nose down nose up to maintain speed all right so that's that's how we do that so i'm going to go back to managed and i'm going to basically descend it down to 13000 and i'm going to go now and i'm going to join the lorid star so if i go to nav and i zoom out a little bit Lorid's right there behind us and I'm currently in heading mode so I want to go to Lorid so all I have to do so mind you I'm in heading mode okay there's no dot so what I want to do now is I come here and I hit direct to here's Lorid that's the one I want to go to select Lorid you can see it creates an intercept point to go there so I'm going to come back here and hit insert and now the aircraft see that it's gone to manage mode automatically and it's changed from heading to nav which means it's now following this and it's now navigating me all the way back to Lorid so Lorid is about 43 nautical miles away and uh, that's when we're gonna start this uh, this approach now the approach in Lorid uh, basically we start at Lorid maintaining 230 knots so I just need to make sure that the aircraft knows that and I can confirm that from here. You see that? That's the managed speed and there's a minimum flight level of flight level 160 or below requirement. And if you look here, the aircraft knows what that is. So the aircraft as we get closer, will, as long as it stays in manage mode, the aircraft will reduce its speed to 230 knots. So uh, we're waiting for that to happen. In the meantime, the uh, Lorid 3 Charlie, uh, which is what we're going to be following today. Oh, is it Lor Lorid 4 Delta? I forget. Let's check it. 
it's the uh, arrivals we're going to be doing the lorry 3 Charlie okay so the lorry 3 Charlie approach uh, basically takes us to from lorry flight level 160 or below uh, maintaining 230 knots to uh, Orgur then Peebus and then to Imopo from Imopo we have a waypoint which is Delta Bravo 531 and if you look at that it actually has a waypoint an, an altitude constraint of 8000 or higher which means we cannot descend uh, below 8000 at that waypoint all right that's why the line is underneath the uh, 8000 after that we join the lorry for Delta and we go to Delta Bravo 533 where our speed should be 210 knots and again maintaining 8000 and below at 8000 and above and then after that is Delta Bravo 534 and then again if you look at Delta Bravo 528 that has a constraint of 7000 feet or below so which means I cannot be above 7000 feet when I'm at that waypoint so what we're gonna do now is we're basically going to start our descent all right so as we're approaching Lorid, I'll get back to you in just a few seconds as we approach Lorid. And then I'm going to show you how we can do a managed descent on the Airbus. A few moments later. Alright, here we are. We're just about under two miles away from Lorid. And as we approach Lorid, because it's in the database and it knows that it has to be at a speed of 230 knots it automatically because we're in managed speed it's maintaining 230 knots for us and we need to be flat level 160 or below so um, it's uh, we're okay on the altitude there now we're on the or the lorid 4 delta approach so now I need to descend okay so here's the difference between open descent uh, open climb, open descent, and uh, manage climb, manage descent. Now, if you look here at Delta Bravo 531, there is an altitude constraint of 8,000 feet or higher. So, if I if I put say 7,000, okay, oh, I'm gonna put 5,000 in there, and I push it to do a managed descent. Okay, I get the little dot which means it's managed and here we go it's gonna go descent and it's gonna start descending now but very soon you'll notice that it will not it will actually stop us at 8,000 because it knows that it cannot go below 8,000 over here so in theory as we get closer it should not exceed uh, below 8,000 until we pass that waypoint all right so we're just gonna watch that I'm gonna put arc bring it there I'm gonna make sure it's managed yep it is managed and I'll get back to you once we get closer to that waypoint just to show you how the managed thing works more moments later all right, we're getting closer to uh, Delta Bravo 531 and as you notice the altitude became magenta because it knows that there is an 8000 altitude constraint. Now even though I've chosen to go down to 2000 but I pushed it as managed, even though I want 2000, the aircraft is going to stop at 8000. It will not, this is, a, this is how you do a managed descent, all right? Now, if I had chosen open descent where I pull the knob, then it will ignore the constraints and it will go straight away down to 2000. So let me show you how it's gonna work right now. You see that 8000 is coming and we should get an alt constraint indication over here, which means the aircraft is maintaining that altitude due to constraints. So we're pretty much on the profile now the next waypoint has a speed restriction of 210 knots 
8,000. Still maintaining 8,000 over there. So there we go, all stop. And now it's maintaining 8,000. Now as we fly to the next waypoint, the one after that has got a constraint of 7,000 or below. So the aircraft is going to maintain this until it's going to maintain 8,000 until those constraints don't exist anymore and then it's going to go down to what I've selected. However, let's just say I was cleared to do so. So now all I have to do is pull this knob. Now this, the little circle is gone. It's not managed anymore. And now you have open descent 2,000. So even though there's a constraint of 8,000 feet over here, because I'm doing an open descent, it's going to ignore all the constraints and it's going to go straight away down to 2,000 feet. So that's how you do managed, uh, managed climb, managed descent, and open climb and open descent. I hope that uh, that explains it. And another thing, in terms of the vertical speed, if you're in head in VS mode, it's going to be vertical speed mode. All right. So if I pull this out, it's going to be flying in what we call feet per minute. 1500 feet per minute is the rate at which it's descending right now. However, in the Airbus, I'm going to go back to managed. In the Airbus, you also have track FPA. So in track FPA, it changes. It changes from VS, which is vertical speed, to flight path angle. So let's just say you had to do an approach where you had to descend at a very specific angle. Let's just say you need to descend at three degrees. So what you do is you bring on the track FPA and now if you pull the knob, it's no longer in feet per minute, it's in flight path angle. So right now we're descending at a negative 1.0 degrees, nose down 1.0. So if you look at that, it's literally just 1.0 down below the horizon. Now I want to descend at 2.5 degrees nose down. So all I have to do is dial this to the uh, dial this to the left and make it negative 2.5 and watch that. The aircraft is now going to pitch down to uh, to 2.5, negative 2.5 right there. If I take off the flight director, you can see there's a 2.5 marker and the aircraft is maintaining 2.5. If I want 5 I'm going to go 5 degrees, negative 5 degrees, and the aircraft is now going to pitch for 5 degrees, which is right over there. And that is how you do FPA. Now I can also push to level off, make it 0, FPA 0 degrees, and it's going to bring this up to 0 degrees and level us off right there. So that's how you, so that's how you work the autopilot and the various modes that it has. I'm gonna go back to a managed descent of 2000. And uh, so now I can come back to heading VS, managed descent. We've got descent, we've got 2000. Everything's looking fine. We're following the star all the way back to 2000. And then we can do the final approach back in and land the aircraft. So that's how you work the autopilot, the FCU and its various modes. Hope you found this useful. If you, uh, if you like it, please click like and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and feel free to share this with your friends. Thank you so much for tuning in and you guys have a wonderful day. Bye bye.